Today I'm going to continue talking about the PowerShell pipeline and how it works and specifically parameter binding by property name. This is basically part two of episode eight and if you haven't seen that go ahead and check out that episode first. Now in this example I have a couple commandlets connected via the pipeline. This first command that's going to, going to import a CSV file and then produce an output in the form of an object or objects that will then go into the pipeline and this other command that new alias will then try to bind to these objects one by one in one of two ways. The first way is one of its parameters will try to bind to the object by value. And if you want to see an example of that, go ahead and check out episode eight. If that fails, then the command that tries to bind to the object by property name. And how this works is actually pretty straightforward. An object a lot of times will have several property names. In this example, there'll be two property names. And if that property name matches one of the names of the parameters, and that parameter accepts pipeline input in the form of by property name, the commandlet will then bind to the object. So I'll go ahead and show you an example of this. I have two PowerShell windows open here. And I'll go ahead and run the import CSV so you can take a look at this. Now I have basically three aliases that I'm going to create. And the last one, for example, I have an alias of P, which will basically be an alias for ping. Just want to show you that real quick. And I'll go ahead and pipe the results to get member or GM for short so we can uh, further look at the property, further look at the object. And you'll notice that this object has two properties, one called name and one called value. Now in this window, I'll go ahead and open up the full help documentation of the new alias commandlet so I can take a look at uh, what parameters accept pipeline input. And if you look here, you'll notice, well, there is a name parameter and there is a name property for this object. And there is a name, um, there's a parameter called value and a property name called value. So just by looking at that, you can potentially see that those will map by prop, those will bind by property name. But to be sure, I actually have to check the parameter definitions to make sure those parameters accept pipeline input via by property name. So if I scroll up here, I just scroll past it, you'll see the first parameter name, and you'll see that it accepts pipeline input, it says true, and it accepts it by property name. So I know right now that this commandlet, this commandlet parameter will bind to this object name. And when binding by property name, you can actually bind to more than one parameter. So in this example, there's a parameter called value, and it also accepts pipeline input in the form of by property name. So that will bind to the property name value. So when an object comes across the pipeline, the new alias commandlet, in this case, will bind to the object with two of its parameters. One is name, which will bind to the name property, and the other parameter is value, which will bind to the value property. And to show you how this works is when I run this command, this will go ahead and create three different aliases that I just showed you. And just to test that out, I'll type in ping. It's the alias I created for ping. And go ahead and ping my, lo my loopback address. And sure enough, it works as expected. So hopefully you can kind of now see how the parameter binding by property name process works. Now in a future episode, I'm going to talk about creating custom properties to help things match up when they don't line up. Thank you for watching.